Hello, okay. welcome to church today. My name is Candy. I'm part of the team here at Riverside Vineyard. And this is... Obena, I must have some song. <laughs> Cheeky. Yeah, we just want to share a couple of things that will help you this morning. So number one is to get comfortable and grab a drink. Number two is to turn off all screens and all distractions. Yeah. If you have any family, invite them to watch the service. Would you like how me and my mom do it every Sunday, don't we? Yes, we do. Where you do. If you're watching us live on the right hand side, there's a screen where you can say hello to people. But please do keep engaged with what is going on. You can also ask for prayer. The best time to do it is after the talk, and then you can ask for prayer and then connect with your home group to share a verse or two. Let us pray. Father, I just want to thank you. As we begin to worship you, Father, we open our hearts to worship you. And Holy Spirit, you are so invited to, to our service today. Father, be with us as we lift our, our voices in worship. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Amen.
surrounded by your mercy I'm falling to you I'm waiting You're running and I leaning to you As you call me forward, I'm falling into you. I'm waiting, you're running and I leaning to you. Let's just take a moment wherever we are today in our homes just to wait in God's presence. He is present with us today. 
Lord, thank you that you are with us, that you are so kind, so caring, so loving towards us. Lord, we choose to wait on you, to lean into you, to be carried by you. Lord, everything that we have is found in you. And so we trust you and we thank you. Amen. Hi, welcome to Riverside. I am Beth and this is Andy. It's really good to have you with us today. Um, and just thank you to those who've led us in worship today. As part of our worship today, we want to give um, all the amazing things that we get to do at Riverside are made possible because of the generosity of people like you and me. Um, so really, this is just an extension of our worship. Um, many people give by standing order, and that's really our preferred method, uh, or maybe by banks transfer. Um, and if you give in those ways, thank you and do remember your giving now. If you don't usually give, or maybe you give irregularly, could you maybe start to give regularly today? Or if you don't normally, if you give normally by the offering buckets, um, you can continue to do this online. All you need to do is click on the giving link that will pop up and that will take you through to our giving page. If you are a UK taxpayer, please do click on the gift aid box. That enables to claim back 25% of your gift at no cost to yourself. So while we give, let me just pray for a moment. Lord, thank you that you are a good God and everything we have comes from you. Lord, I ask that you would bless it now, bless what we give and multiply it and use it, Lord, to extend your kingdom and to bless others around us. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome, especially if you're new or fairly new with us. Uh, we'd love to connect with you. Uh, you can simply click on the connection button. I think that, that may be up here, depending on what device you're on. Um, just take one minute, fill in your details. We'll get in touch um, and send you a thank you goodie um, in the post to you. After the services, some of our small groups meet together online and just chat and pray, which is awesome. If you're new or maybe your small group, you're not yet part of a small group, then why don't you come and join us in our virtual foyer? It's very exciting. First wow. time today. Um, we'll be there to say hello, as with others. Um, the link will pop up at the end of the service. So no need to turn your video on. If you're still in bed with your pyjamas, that's OK. That's fine. <laughs> but do come and join us and say hello. Um, if you're exploring faith for yourself or you've got some questions about who Jesus is, then we would love to give to you a copy of a great little book called Why Jesus. Um, there is a link popping up now. Just click on that and it will download it for free. Wonderful. We want to share just a couple of things with us all today. Uh, links will pop up in the chat section uh, where there are links um, if you're watching live or they'll be in the text below if you're watching catch up. Firstly, it's just an apology. Um, <laughs> last Sunday morning, Father's Day, Ash shared some dad jokes with us and they were, they were painful at times. And That's we, bad as yours. <laughs> we're, we're just deeply sorry. Ash, we love you. Please don't give up the day job. Um, next Sunday is Celebration Sunday. This is a big Sunday at Riverside each year. Um, and this year we'll be doing two services at our normal times at 9.30 and 11.15. There'll be a bigger worship sound. The band are working really yeah. hard on that, aren't they? Um, and it's going to be great. Um, we're going to have a couple of highlights of video, plus a really added extra, which is awesome, I have to say. And they're really special services. And we're excited just to celebrate together and look back over the last year. Um, after each of the service, we'll do the virtual foyer so you can zoom in and say hello there and come and chat to people. And you can dress up if you want to, or you can wear shorts and t-shirts. That's, that's okay. So you may want to bring, I don't know, balloons or ice cream or whatever makes it feel different and exciting for you. And our kids and our youth will be celebrating to do to, as well at services at 10.30. Yeah, so please don't miss that. It's, yeah. it's such a big Sunday for us. Um, next up, uh, we're going to hear from Alison about the money management course. In the book of Proverbs, it says, wise planning will watch over you and understanding will keep you safe. One of the realities of COVID-19 is that for many of us, it will have an impact on our finances. We've partnered with Christians Against Poverty or CAP for several years running money courses and there's never been a better time to relook at your personal finances, maybe for the first time or simply because things are changing. We're running an online cap money course over two Thursday evenings using Zoom. It's an introduction to managing your money, building a budget and looking at what to do when it doesn't balance. There'll be a workbook, videos to watch and a secure online budgeting tool that you can access. 
You won't need to have your camera on or to share any personal financial information with the group. So why not sign up today? Alison, thank you so much. This is an amazing course. It is open to everyone, whether or not you think you've got your finances in order mm. or not. Uh, it's running on two Thursday evenings, starting on July the 2nd. You can sign up via the link that's in the chat section or via the church website. Um, lastly, as you will all know, we are easing out of lockdown and a lot of people have been asking, um, when are we gonna start meeting our services you know, in person? And the answer to that really is we need to be patient. Um, the government guidelines are still being updated. They're changing a lot. Um, it does look at this point that services would not be allowed to include singing. <clears throat> Excuse me. And do you know, that's a real challenge for us as a vineyard, isn't it? Um, we just love worship. It's such a high priority to us. Um, and that'd be really hard to do. Um, and services may also be limited probably to 30 people, maybe like as, as the weddings are. Um, and when you think we want to leave space for newcomers and visitors, we've done some maths, haven't we? <laughs> we reckon we'll be on about 20 services over the weekend with the cleaning in between. Yeah. So I'm sorry, patience, not yet. Um, some people have also been asking, are we gonna continue um, streaming our services even once we can physically meet? And um, the answer is that is almost certainly yes, we will absolutely aim to do that. So the guidance is changing. Obviously from the 4th of July, um, it does open up possibilities, maybe for small groups or some other activities. Um, having said that, if you're waiting to get married, just come and chat. Just come and have a yeah, chat. Yeah, do that. Wonderful. So next up, you're gonna hear from Rob. Rob is amazing. He is one of the best preachers ever. Who wrote that? I think Rob wrote. Seriously, we love Rob. We're excited to hear what he has to share with us today. Rob, over to you, my friend. Hi, everyone. It's great to be with you today. Um, over the last few weeks, we've been looking at the world's most famous prayer, the Lord's Prayer. 2,000 years ago, um, Jesus' followers, they approach him and they ask, Lord, teach us to pray. They'd seen how he treated people, how he'd healed the sick, raised the dead, how he'd loved the last, the lost and the least. They'd seen how people swarmed around him and followed him wherever he went. But they'd also seen how in the midst of this, he continually carved out time to be alone with God, his Father. How he constantly turned to prayer, however crazy and chaotic life might have seemed to be. It's prayer that sustained Jesus through whatever was thrown at him. In my own life, I know the importance of prayer, particularly, I guess, in difficult times or when I'm struggling to make a big decision but if I'm honest, prayer can often be difficult to sustain in the everyday of life. But you know, God our Father is passionately interested in the everyday ordinariness of our lives. If I'm honest, I often attempt to overcomplicate prayer. Does anyone else do that? But you know, prayer at its heart is very simple. It's a conversation between us and our Heavenly Father. I would love to just start today by praying this pray famous prayer together and I'd love you to join in from wherever you are today. Please don't make me do this on my own. I I'm going to go with the contemporary version, um, but why don't we pray together now? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. It's such a great prayer, but there's a point where it gets a lot more personal. We go back through the prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. All fine so far? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. It's all good. Give us today our daily bread. Yeah, I can definitely get behind that one. And then the bombshell. Forgive us 
our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. You know, it's right in the middle of this prayer, but it's also the point where we're most likely to get stuck. And yet I believe passionately that forgiveness lies at the heart of living life well. Jesus came into this world to give us life, life in all its fullness and abundance. But if we can't forgive, we will quickly find ourselves stuck. So today we're going to talk about this incredible gift of forgiveness. If you've been following Jesus for decades um, or you're perhaps just exploring who he is, I hope what I share today is helpful for you. Forgiveness is the greatest gift that God has given us. That through Jesus and what he did on the cross, everything we do and will ever do is forgiven, is wiped to is wiped clean, we have a clean slate. P. Gregg in his excellent book, How to Pray, puts it like this. It doesn't matter what you've said or done, what you've thought about saying or doing, where you've been or who you've been there with, there is more grace in sin, more grace in God than sin in you. I think I should probably repeat that last line. There is more grace in God than sin in you. I love that. It sounds so good, doesn't it? But do we actually live like we believe that's true? You see, forgiveness, I think, is something we struggle to really talk about. Here's perhaps some possible reasons for that. Firstly, it tells us that we might have been in the wrong. And that's not easy to admit sometimes. It reminds us of how we fall short, all of us fall short, and how often we have fanned and upset those around us, particularly those closest to us. And it can remind us of what others might have done to us. You see, the world tells us to move on quickly, to live life without regret, but it's very hard to move on properly unless we're able to both forgive and be forgiven. Ephesians 4.26 um, says, do not let the sun go down on our anger. And, you know, I grew up in a home where we took that extremely literally. Yes, there were some late nights, but I actually can't think of one time where we weren't able to forgive and be forgiven. And I'm so incredibly grateful for my parents who modelled that to us. Now, whilst I wouldn't necessarily advocate for that kind of sleep deprivation, I know we struggle with that in our family, this is such an important principle. A principle that enables us to truly let go and to move on well. You see, if we don't truly forgive and ask for forgiveness, it can be so easy to get stuck in difficult places, places of anger, places where we struggle with negative thoughts, either about ourselves or the person who has done us wrong. You know, forgiveness works two ways. It's like a cycle. We receive forgiveness in order that we can give out forgiveness. We receive it and then we give it out. Now, maybe in principle that seems like a really good thing to do, but it can be, can be incredibly difficult to put that into practice. So why do we find it so hard to ask for forgiveness? Why do we find it hard to forgive those who have wronged us? I don't know where you find yourself today, but perhaps you know that you are in desperate need of forgiveness right now. Or maybe you're holding on to the pain of something that has been done wrong to you. So why don't we press more into what the Bible tells us about forgiveness. Forgive us our sins. You know, the reality is we all need forgiveness. The Lord's Prayer can be found twice in the Bible, in the Gospels of both Matthew and Luke, and it's phrased slightly differently in each one. Matthew phrases it like this, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Whereas Luke writes, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Or perhaps you've got an older translation, you may be more familiar with the word trespasses. So, so which is it? I think perhaps it's all of these. You know, I think what Jesus is trying to do here is to make it real 
both for his disciples, but also for us. You know, debt in Jesus' time, as it is today, was a huge issue. People were living under the weight of the Roman Empire, which meant taxes were high. So many were weighed down by the weight of mounting debt. The rich were getting richer, whilst the poor were getting poorer. And it's a cycle that's been repeated again and again throughout history. This is not what God's kingdom is all about. And if you're struggling with debt today, can I urge you to sign up for the money management course? It'd be such a helpful thing to do. You know, if we think about sin, it's basically a debt that we can't repay. Sin is anything that separates us from God. And whether we like to admit it or not, we are guilty as charged. The struggle with sin is that it's personal and that's where things get harder. Um, there's a, um, the Alcoholics Anonymous have these 12 steps to recovery and the first three people work through those pretty well. But then you get to step four and this is where people are encouraged to look on the inside. To do like a, a moral inventory if you like. What have I done wrong? And then in step five it gets really personal. This is where they are encouraged to admit to both God and others the hurt and pain that has been caused. And that's the point where so many give up. You know, it's tough to look that deeply on the inside, but it's the only way that leads to real change. So when was the last time you had a real good look at what's going on on the inside? Maybe there are things that we need to deal with today. Perhaps you were too quick to post a comment on social media. Maybe you raised your voice at your kids again this morning. Or you're still feeling resentful about the argument you had last night. Or maybe there's something from your past that you've just brushed under the carpet without ever really dealing with it. Where are you stuck today? We all need forgiveness. This is at the heart of everything. It's vital to living life well. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. We need to forgive others. You know, forgiveness is like breathing. We breathe it in and then we breathe it out. Forgive us as we forgive others. Breathe it in and out. On the cross as Jesus was dying he says these famous words to those who were persecuting him. Father forgive them. Not because they seemed like nice people or because he was feeling especially forgiving that day but because they didn't know what they were doing. See everything Jesus did in life and death was about bringing a new way of living, a new reality on heaven as in earth. And at the heart of this is forgiveness in healing, in accepting and welcoming in tax collectors and sinners, even those who were persecuting him as he died. And he sets them free. When we don't forgive someone, it's a little bit like carrying a weight on your shoulders and expecting the other person to collapse under the weight of it. You know, if we want to live life in all its fullness, we need to allow that weight to be taken off us. Maybe today. There are people who are listening today, maybe it's you, who too, for too long have felt crushed because of something that someone else did to you. I believe there's an invitation for us to let it go. And if you don't, it will crush you. And we'll take some time to pray about that later. In P. Greg's book, which I mentioned earlier, How to Pray, there's a great chapter on forgiveness and reconciliation. And there's two great stories I just want to point towards now, which I think are just incredible examples of forgiveness. First up, there's Ruby Bridges. She was a six-year-old um, African-American girl who was um, volunteered by her mother to be the first person to go into this all-white school that was not white in Louisiana. Um, she needed up to 25 federal marshals to protect her on her journey to and from school. Every family 
pulled their own kids out of school. Ruby received death threats and she was in a class of one because only one teacher would even teach her. Now there was a child psychologist who offered her some support. Um, and, um, and one time after watching Ruby go to and from school, he said this to her. He said, you look like you were talking to people on your way to school yesterday. Did you finally get angry with them? No, doctor. I didn't tell them anything. I didn't talk to them. Well, who were you talking to, he said. The li little girl stared at him. I was talking to God. I was praying for the people in the street. You were praying for them. Why? Well, don't you think they need praying for? The psychologist was lost for words. What do you say when you pray for them, Ruby? Oh, I always say the same thing. Please, God, try to forgive these people because even if they say these mean things, they don't know what they're doing. Isn't that incredible? Gordon Wilson was um, a man who lived in, in Northern Ireland um, and his daughter was sadly killed by an, an IRA bomb in 1987. And amidst all that rubble, he was interviewed on the BBC that day. And he said these powerful words. He said, I bear no ill. I will bear no grudge. Dirty sort of talk is not going to bring her back to life. And then he went on to say, she's in heaven and we shall meet again. I will pray for these men tonight and every night. Isn't that amazing? Gordon Wilson's for willingness to forgive was a landmark moment in the Northern Ireland struggles and in part his decision to forgive his enemies changed the course of history in that part of the world. This is the nature. These two stories speak of the new reality of God's kingdom where we choose to forgive those who do us wrong. Of course it's not easy. And it's not saying that it's okay when we're hurt, when we're abused or wrongly accused. It's not forgetting, but it's choosing to forgive even in the midst of incredible opposition or heartbreak, in the midst of persecution. Both these stories remind us that our choices to forgive can bring transformative change into the world around us. So how can you and I move on today? How can we do well in this area of forgiveness? It's hard. But as I said at the beginning, I believe passionately that it's key if we want to do well in life. You know, forgiveness begins with God in prayer. It's bringing him our unforgiven sin. It's bringing him all the ways we have been wronged. Something that I found really helpful is the exam, and it's an ancient practice, but helps us to look on the inside at what's really going on. It's a way of just like reflecting on the day that's gone and helps us to move on well. And I think Psalm 139 talks about it really well, um, where it says, God, investigate my life. This is from the message version. Get all the facts firsthand. I'm an open book to you. Even from a distance, you know what I'm thinking. P. Gregg in his, in his How to Pray book talks about the exam in like this. It's about replaying, rejoicing, repenting and rebooting. Four R's, if I write them down, even I can remember them. The first one, replay. Go over the last 24 hours. Have a think about what has actually happened. What did you feel about those things that happened? Why did you do that thing? Why did you say that? Why did you feel that way? Just, just replay all the things that go on. And as you do that, Start to rejoice. Give thanks to God for the good things that you see in the day that has passed. And that's something we've been finding incredibly helpful as a family over these last few months. The third thing is repent. Where you recognise that you've done wrong, say sorry. Ask for forgiveness. And if you need to, speak to the person about it. And the last one is reboot. What are you going to do differently as a result of what you've just processed. And that can be a really helpful thing to do. You know, God will forgive us, but we also need to forgive ourselves too and to move on well. But that can be incredibly hard. We also need to put our trust in God that he will deal with the things that we've had to face to enable us 
to move on and forgive. It's, it's passing on our burdens, passing on the things that we're struggling with in order that we can move on and God can deal with the issue. The second thing I want to share is that forgiveness continues in community. Community is, is so important anyway, it's important to be connected in with others, to do life well with other people. But for us, you know, around this area of forgiveness, it's a place to confess. It's a place to support one another. It's a place to encourage and it's a place to disciple well. Discipleship happens so well in community. That's why small groups are important. And maybe you're not part of a small group, such a helpful step to take. Why don't you try one out this week? Or in tri groups, maybe just meeting with one or two other people just to share openly and honestly and then to pray for one another. It's something I did just this week. I, I meet up with a bunch of people regularly and that really helps me to one, to let go of some of the things that I'm dealing with, but to also pray into that. Forgiveness happens in community. But if you're really stuck and you need extra help, um, can I urge you just to talk to your small group leader or you can email me, rob at riversidevineyard.com. Sometimes we need professional help. We can pray for one another, but sometimes we need to refer one another to people that can really help. You know, the Lord just wants us to do really well in this whole area of forgiveness. And, and, and there's an opportunity for us to pray now. So I, I just want to encourage you where you are at right now. Why don't you just put down any distractions? So if you're still holding onto your phone, why don't you just... Put it to the side for a moment. Why don't you just take a moment to be still, to let go of anything that's, that's been troubling you right now. I'm going to invite the Holy Spirit to come and I just want us to then just pray through a couple of areas that I feel like the Lord wants to, um, to, to bring healing today. So come Holy Spirit. Come and make us aware of your presence right now. Lord, we thank you for your peace and I pray that it would just rise in our hearts as we become more aware of your presence, Lord. As, as, I, was, as I was preparing, you know, do you just stay in that place? I just sense there are a bunch of people that have never given their yes to Jesus or, or people perhaps that have just let things slide and, and it's just, it, this is a moment to either say yes for the first time or to say yes again. Every day is a good day to say yes to Jesus, but this is an opportunity to receive the forgiveness that he offers you. So if that's you, I'd love you to pray to pray with you now. For those others, you know, maybe it's just a moment just to stay connected, okay? So Jesus, thank you that you know me and you still love me. Thank you that it doesn't matter what I've done you come to forgive. Jesus, thank you that there is more grace in you than there is sin in me. So Lord, forgive me for everything I have done wrong. Would you wipe the slate clean? I choose right now to turn away from the things that are stopping me from living life to its fullest. I choose to turn towards you today. Holy Spirit, come and fill me so that I would know you are with me. Thank you. Amen. Now let's just stay in that place. But if you prayed that for the first time today, why don't you click on the bottom that, uh, button that pops up in the chat area? Um, if you're on catch up, why don't you simply hit yes at riversidevineyard.com. We would love to pray for you today. Now, as we continue to pray for one another, normally we'd invite a whole bunch of people up. There may be different ways that you can connect. Um, there, is, there is a live um, prayer feature on, on the online church platform that we're using. So do click in on there and there are a bunch of team that are ready to pray for you. You may otherwise be connecting with your small group. That's a great time to, to pray for one another. Or there may be, um, you know, maybe someone you can give a call, maybe someone you need to confess something to or just to ask for forgiveness or to forgive someone as well. But I believe that many of us are stuck in this area of, of, of forgiveness. 
there are things that we need to admit to and to move on. And if that's you, I would love you to receive some prayer today. I'm going to pray over you, but then like there's those options to kind of go and receive further prayer. So I just felt that there were a bunch of us who were just struggling to let go of things that have perhaps been done to you in the past. And this is one of those moments, you know, those key moments where transformative change is released. And so I, I, I did just sense that there may be just some people that are struggling, um, particularly around the area of, of abuse. Um, I, I sense that maybe there are a few people that have even just um, in the past, perhaps um, been the victim of domestic abuse. We would love to pray for you today. Now, if you um, are experiencing that right now, please do reach out for help. You know, chat to your small group leader and they'll be able to point you towards someone you can help or drop me an email and we at rob at riversidevineyard.com and we will find you the support that you need. Um, but I sense that for, for someone, if this was just a moment to receive healing for that. So I'm, I'm going to pray around all of those different areas that we might be feeling stuck. I feel there's some healing for us as well, physical healing. So if you need healing right now, we would love to pray with you today. But let me just pray around this area of, of getting unstuck. So, Lord, I, I'm, I know that in my own life I can sometimes get stuck in a pattern of behaviour. Lord, I want to pray that we would um, know the release and the freedom that you long to bring us. So where we feel stuck right now, Lord, I want to pray that you would lift that weight from us. And I sense that there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a place of freedom, there's a spacious place for us to step into. So step out in obedience and in faith today. But we know that these things are hard to deal with. Lord, help us to deal with them well. Holy Spirit, come and heal us. Help us to move on from these things really well. We ask for more of your presence now, Lord. Thank you. So in a moment, the band um, have got a couple of songs that are gonna gonna play. This is a great time to be receiving, to be receiving prayer, and to praying for one another. So if there's anything else that you have a um, need for prayer for, we'd love to pray with you as well. I sense that particularly, you know, if if anyone's got any back pain, we'd love to pray for you this morning. Um, you know, just reach out for prayer, ask for prayer um, in the live chat. Um, join us on the on the, the lounge later on as well. We'd love to connect with you too. Thank you.
Yeah, yeah. 